Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This is middle of April, what's the day? April 18th, and we're out here in Delmont, Pennsylvania. Do you guys remember this project? Let me know in the comments if you remember that project. We're back on the same property. This is a beautiful waterfall, creates some incredible sound and a beautiful space, but you can't have any fish in it, and we need fish. So right here in the same backyard, we're moving to the other side of the walkway. Right now we have a big green stretch right there of lawn. He doesn't want to cut any grass back in here, so we came up with a plan to fix that. We're putting in a big 16 by 22, I think, 20 by 16 koi pond in here. There's a patio going in down here. The patio is going to out overhang the pond. We're putting a big bubbling rock in there, similar to exactly the same what we have on the left hand. It's going to be on the right hand, and a stream coming down in there. DJ and I are going to be making it beautiful out here once again. Follow along, let the action begin. Valor and I are just looking at what we're doing here. Take a peek at that design. This is what Derek gave me, and this is what the homeowner threw together, which is good. I like to see that because I can see exactly what he's envisioning. We're just talking about what kind of rocks we're gonna need. We're gonna be building, here's our blank slate. Take a good look at that because it's not gonna look like that very long. Change. <laughs> so we're going to mimic the setup that we did over there with those bubbling rocks. We're going to kind of be mimicking that in an effort to get more height. I'm going to be building this up with some boulders, very similar to what we did over there. So what I'm thinking, Valor, is I'm going to need some bigger stuff and I'm probably going to end up burning through what is it palletized out there. And you have some good stuff to rock in the bottom of the pond. So I'd say the next load bring some bigger bring stuff, more bring more bigger boulders, stuff, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna start down here, build a kind of a wall of boulders down along here, and maybe terminate that eh, somewhere in here, you know? And that will allow me to bring this up a little higher, and that's gonna allow me to build bigger waterfalls, which is kind of what we're all about. And also lose all your fills. So you that's true, that's true. Well, we, all, we have a bank where we can get rid of fill down there, but we're actually supposed to do the excavation for the patio area down here, so that's gonna create a lot of fill too. So this gives you a little scope of what we're doing. Walkway coming down here, that's the existing walkway. We're gonna come off of that walkway. This is, we have a big aluminum plate, that's, Aluminum, yep. that's a hard word for me to say. That we're gonna put out overhanging the pond. So you'll be able to walk out to the um, edge of the patio and be right at the edge of the water. That's gonna be quite a process. It'll be pretty exciting to build. Uh, we've done this on at least one other feature. Tussie Mountain Mulch, we did one there where you can walk out on. And we've done other things with aluminum plates. We build bridges across right, them, so. Right. We've done, we have done stuff. It takes a little bit of, Fancy work, Thinking. but that's what we're gonna do. to show you. It, 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 it is, yeah. I, I, I can't wait to build it. I mean, I've yeah. helped with those builds, but this is the first one I've actually gonna undertake on my own. Well, DJ is gonna give his input. Cause, yeah, of course. Cause he always does, you know? And then we have a 16 by 22 foot koi pond over in, right down in here. What's gonna keep the raccoons from eating the koi again? I'm gonna make it deep. And we're gonna put spikes around the edge of the pond and the fish will have a cool little drawbridge. They'll be able to pull up. Yeah, yep, we're gonna put some big fish caves in. And then, he's not gonna have any grass to cut back here anymore. So who wants grass? He when wants, you, when you can have that kind of stuff. He said uh, he wants to have the biggest lawn there with the smallest lawn from there, so. Sounds like, that sounds like a good plan. Alrighty, let's start destruction a while. What are the basins for uh, bubbling rocks? Are they seven by 10? I'm thinking that's what they are. So let's go eight. Maybe I should go eight this way. And ten this way. Hmm, maybe that, yeah, that, that's about right. Where do we want to end up? About here maybe? So if we did something like 
Wow. I don't want to get closer to that tree than about that. Stream here. And then another one might be a waterfall kind of pointed this way. And then this one kind of pointed this way. And then uh, it'll end in the pond. I might need to scoot this over a little bit. Well, I need that space there. Okay, so now we got a 16 by 22. All right, 22 this way. And about here, paint that. So let's just picture some skimmers over in here, here, in here, come in here a little bit, get away from that tree. Now, the pond would do this, but it would kind of do this because of the overhand. And then the patio could do this. We could uh, tuck in that fire ring. Well, I don't know. That's all going to be patio. I think, I think that's going to, I think we're going to run up this way a little more. With the, uh, okay, we could do this. Something like that. And then put that patio, I mean that ring right here. Yep. That you you could still walk through here yeah, and get some chairs gonna, back here. A little thing like that just in this corner. Yeah, you know what? I think we should paint a few more lines, <laughs> right, Deej? A couple more patio lines would be helpful. You you said you kind of are looking for a fast-moving stream. Yeah, that's what the idea was. Okay, so that that'll mean a shallow stream. If you want to get a fast-moving, it's going to be shallow and and narrow. So this one, I'm kind of thinking of pointing this way a little bit, right at that area. And this one I probably will just make straight ahead. Know what I'm saying? Yep. Straight this way. And then it would be kind of cool if this one maybe pointed more over in here, yep. you know, cause you'll want, that'll, that'll scent that water moving over towards the skimmers. The yep. So we'll have one going this way, one straight ahead that you'll be able to see from that whole area. And this one you'll be able to see pretty well the whole way too but it's gonna be pointed slightly more this way to get that water current moving over in here. This one I was thinking of making a shallow ripple, but I'm actually not gonna make a falls here at all. This is just gonna be, I would say, stream. I don't think we're gonna have maybe, this will be the same height as that. You know, these two, these two falls will be the same height, and then that one I'll use up whatever elevation I have left. These boulders are probably gonna, you know, if I have a biofalls here that's built up the same height as that one, that means these boulders are going to have to wrap around here a little bit Sorry. to get, that's you know, to get that height. Yeah, because I'll have to go from, say, this hike to that hike. That's fine. So the wall will extend down in here a little okay. bit. Well, they say April showers bring May flowers. I'm expecting some serious flowers this May. In we this, sure got the showers. In this case, it might be snow. I don't know. We got the showers today anyways. So one of the challenges with this project is the access. This is our space. As you can see, we're not staging anything over there. Over there is the neighbor's yard. It's just, we're all gonna have to work in these tight corners. We obviously can't stage anything down here. So every single rock that's gonna go in this pod and stream is going to weave through this narrow gap between the property where we're working and the neighbor. We're going to be bringing every single boulder, every single bag of gravel, everything that's coming down here is going to be coming through this narrow spot. And up here in the front yard, we're going to use that for a staging area. There's all our material, one piece at a time, that's going to weave back through here into the spot where we're going to be working. That's going to take some time and some careful equipment operating. Deej, don't hit the wall. Last time here, we only knocked a few caps off. Yeah, so. we did knock a cap or two off. So I know it fit, I know the machines fit through here, already built a feature coming through here. But last time we were able to bring all of this stuff down into that spot where we're building the pond now and stage it right there and then just shuffle across the walkway to build the water feature on the other side of the walkway. Now we're gonna have to stage it up here and shuffle it down one piece at a time. So that's one thing that's gonna make this time.
Well, good morning. We got a nice fresh start here this morning. Monday when we were down here, we ended up not doing any excavating at all. It just poured on us. And Tuesday it snowed. We got like six inches of snow in the middle of April. The rest of this week looks pretty promising. So today we're gonna start excavation on this 16 by 22 pond. Hopefully we can get it all dug out, put the liner in and uh, get the skimmers set and start maybe rocking in the bottom shelves. There's my machine. There's the spray paint lines. One last look before it turns muddy. Let's get going. Okay, so we've just um, excavated the first shelf of the pond. This is the footprint of the pond. We're getting ready to mark out our next shelves. There's gonna be three shelves in this pond, three steps down. Rather than one deep bowl, we build shelves in our pond so that you have a level spot to place your rock. You'll see when we're done um, excavating exactly what I'm talking about. When I come to mark out the second um, shelf, there's a couple things that I think about when I do that. Where do I want super deep spots? Where do I not want super deep spots? And why is that? So right here is where the stream is going to come in. I don't want a super deep spot here because it takes a really high framing boulder. And uh, we already have a lot of grade change on the back here. So I'm definitely not going to go for a double shelf there. Right here, if you'll remember, is where that, uh, that aluminum piece that I have hangs out over. That's going to be patio out there. I really want it deep here so that you can stand at the edge of the patio and it's deep water down there. So I'm gonna double up the shelf here the whole way. So we'll start against this wall. I know I want to excavate part along there to get that deep and I'll come out here. So over here, I have two skimmers. I don't like super deep areas there because it takes big rocks and I don't like to put super big rocks close to my skimmers if you ever need to do any repair work that's a pain in the neck so i'm going to come out here like this come out here maybe huh yeah like that this will give us a nice spot to set our rocks on and i'll dig down again i'll dig down another 14 inches here for the next shelf i probably want to shelf the whole way along here too because of how high it is if i double it it would take a super tall boulder so let's do this out here the whole way. So there's only gonna be one spot here where we're gonna double it up. The rest of the place we're gonna dig down. Normally I'll make it, you know, if I'd make it super deep here, I'd usually make it really deep over there too. But I'm not gonna do that in this case because this is already gonna take, if we get up above the berm, it's gonna take a 40 inch boulder. So I don't want an 80 inch boulder there. So that's why I'm gonna do that. It's still gonna be deep. There we go, a couple things to think about. Where do I want deep spots, where do I not? If I'm gonna be setting framing boulders, I usually don't want to double it up there. Any place where I come up against a patio, I want a vertical edge of deepness, there I'll double them, make them twice as deep. So there's a couple tips and tricks when you excavate for the next shelf. Let's start digging. Alrighty folks, excavation is complete. That's a little bit after lunchtime and uh, I'll show you what we got going right here. There she is. Nice level shelves, good places to set our boulders on. Really deep right here in this spot right there because that's where our um, patio is gonna hang out over and I want it really deep right there. We got it all raked out, ready to put in our rock pad. That's just a, um, it's a nice protection for the liner. So. You can take a look right here. It's just like nasty rocky stuff in here. And even though I have that rock pad, I was like, that's just horrible stuff for the bottom of the pond. I was scared it was gonna poke a hole in the liner. I brought in some nice topsoil all across the bottom shelf here. Dug out all of that shale and brought in some nice topsoil, raked it out with a rake. And sometimes uh, people will bring in like sand or something. You can do that, but most cases, if there's decent topsoil around, it's fine. You can usually work with what you have unless everything you have is really sharp 
rocks. Those sharp rocks do make it difficult and bad soil do make it difficult to um, get a nice shelf going. And you can see on this shelf, the thing just kind of collapsed on me. So what I plan on doing, and I'll show you this when I start rocking in the pond, I'm going to set my boulders out a little bit and fill in gravel on the inside so that I can uh, get a nice level surface for the next, the second shelf. You can always fix it up if, it, if the soil is too nasty to um, put in a good shelf. So let's bring in our protection rock pad. Now this is the heavy stuff. What you thinking? Did you ever have days where you feel like the weather's just out to get you? That's this. That's been this project. Came up here an hour and a half to rock in the pond, and I'm gonna rock in the pond. That's all there is to it. I don't care if it snows, I don't care if it rains, I'm rocking in the pond. That's the goal today, so are you with me, Deej? Hardly. Oh man, listen to that enthusiasm. Are you gonna be willing to collect the bonus in the end of the year? Yup. Okay, <laughs> are you with me, Deej? Nope. Oh man. And the excavator, yup. You're with me if you can run the excavator. I guess. All right. <sighs> You don't get to pick the days, do you? Is what it is. Let's get build. Alrighty, folks. First boulder strapped up. This boulder has the honor of kicking off this project. We're gonna put it right here and get it up above the height of this shelf so I can get a nice sturdy spot to start rocking in around these skimmers that I set yesterday. I already started filling the pond. I may be getting ahead of myself a little bit. I, we're probably gonna be scrambling to keep ahead of this garden hose filling it up, but we'll get it, right, Deej? Yeah, for sure. No slacking or the pond's gonna be full, okay? What you doing under there, Ben? Shut up! Go away, Deej. He's got himself a nice little tent and he's uh, doing something under there. He's, that, he's that, I didn't make a hole in the liner. I'm not putting on a patch. That's, that, that's not what's happening. <laughs> 